everyone, my name is Tegan, like that's Tandy Writes. Today we have something a little different. I don't think I've ever done an unboxing on this channel. And also, I especially know I have not done an indie unboxing. I've been scrolling book Twitter, author Twitter recently, also book talk, and I saw a self-published indie author say that she had a box of 30 copies of her book returned from a bookshop, and that in order to make up the money she lost on that, she would have to sell 300 copies of her book. So I thought, oh, I'll check out your book, I'm interested. I'm always interested in how people get their books actually in bookshops. And I was browsing and I thought, you know, as an indie author, I should probably read and promote and interact with the indie community a lot more, rather than seeing my little bubble where it's safe. So I did some browsing. I went onto the Indie Story Geek website, which is just a kind of a good read situation specifically for indie books and I love it and they had a competition last year called Indie Ink Awards which is like a fan voted award which is again a very fun I was not made in that so some of the books in here are chosen from that selection so I will talk a little bit about them as they come out and I'm very excited I love books this one you may notice is already opened because it arrived separately to the other ones and I was confused and I didn't realize and I had to open it and see what it was and this one here, as we slide you out, is The Rockin's Familiar. This is by Nikki Lee. This is one This is one that I did find on the Indie Story Geek website. And this was a finalist in Best Debut, Mental Health Representation, and Best Morally Grey Character. And it was a winner in Prettiest Prose and Best Friendship. So I'm excited by this one. This is, look at her, look at her, look at her. For a debut, she's thick. Let's examine under the jacket a bit because I I don't think I've ever seen any indie physical books before. I have a few ebook copies, but let's investigate. Okay, we've got some we've got some writing on the flap. Then we have Ooh. I'm gonna assume this was published on Ingram Spark because to my knowledge they are the only like indie publisher that lets you print stuff beneath the dust jacket if you have a dust jacket. Let's put you back together and read a little more of what you're about. I did skim read the descriptions as I was choosing books because I first of all found the representation categories that I was interested in. And then I skimmed through and I was like, yeah, okay, this sounds like something I would read. So let's see. An orphan bent on revenge, a monster searching for freedom, a forbidden pact that binds their fates. I, I don't need to read further than that. I know that I'm all over that. And now let's open this one. I'm also going to say these books, there must have been, I have to get them through Amazon because that is just... Let's talk about Amazon self-publishing real quick. Pretty much whatever you buy in your book from, to my knowledge, it's my budget, it's in my pocket. So personally, I don't care if you support Amazon in this situation. Obviously, for other publishers, Amazon doesn't help me ethically, I don't know. But if you talk about going to Amazon, or going to Amazon, just because they're spending money, indie authors do. That's just something. Because sometimes it's convenient to self-publish, actually, don't they? Books. But again, that again, I don't support Amazon as a company, but I do understand the urge, the need for it. What was I actually saying about Amazon? Oh yeah, these copies of the books, I... But that must be selling something, because this hardcover here, this guy was £6. It was like a 75% discount or something. And in here there's another hardcover, which I think was around the £6 region, and two paperbacks, which I think were 2 to £3 each. That's like a 75% off sale, and I'm... I have no idea what was going on. At least I know for when I've had my books there in the past, when my book is on sale, I still get my full profit. So I'm hoping these guys do as well. That comes into the Amazon shady behaviour again. But it's like, these are so cheap. If if they still get full profit all time, I will buy infinite cheap books and have all your money and have full shelves of indie books rather than whatever's going on here. This is the one that I saw on TikTok from that specific author. This is Autumn's Tithe by Hannah Parker. You are... Is that an Ingram barcode? Her only ally is about to become her greatest enemy. Okay, this one has like a more traditional hardback dust jacket where they have all descriptions on the inside, whereas this one has a description on the back. And like, I love a description on the inside. But again, the artwork, fun. This is, this, this could definitely compete with a lot of traditionally published books for the cover. This is gorgeous. Let's open them up. Every girl in Ballamore dreams of being chosen by the Fae. Do they? Blood betrayal and lust for power. Yeah, I need you to please. These are gorgeous. I love these. I love these. Also, I'm fine with characters on the cover as long as their face isn't the entire thing and it's not a photo. And now let's grab the 
first paper bag I feel is, oh, you're an interesting size. You're a little scuffed on the edges. This one is Once Stolen by Dien Bryn. Brine? I'm not too sure. This one confused me when I was buying it. Where is it? Because I think on Amazon it says this is the second book in a series, but the first book, the one that's listed as book one, is a prequel, which I think they're just set in the same world, but they're not part of like a full connecting storyline. And the first one has like a completely different themed cover. And it's just, it was confusing. But I like the description of this one. This is another one that I found on the Indie Ink Awards. This was a finalist in Neurodivergent Representation, Bisexual Representation and Disability Representation by a Disabled Author. Which is why I picked this up because I'm interested. I want more disability rep. I think, maybe not by the time I post this video. We're in July right now. Maybe it will go up by then. But I think July is Disability Representation Month. So this is always nice to have some disability books about. If we get like a fun, I love a fun title page. And this one's definitely printed on cream paper because it's not blinding white in true KDP fashion. And then our final book, you feel quite little. The Wall by Sarah Jane Singer. I remember picking out this one because I was very intrigued by the cover. But now looking at it up close, it looks like there's like a line and a girl hair. I dreamed of the outside, it was murky, like a smudge of grey sky after rain, like my mother's tears. But the call that came from the dream was clear. Go, it said. Go out, something awaits you. Julia has lived her whole life beside the wall. Dreams of knowing the world. Mysterious archer. Mm, her lion companion. Fans of Naomi Novik. Laura E. Weymouth. Yes. Yeah, this doesn't feel like Amazon paper. It also, also doesn't feel like in-ground paper. So this is the secret third option. But this is cute. Let's see. I found this one on the Indian Awards as well. Where it's just, let's have a look. This was a nominee in so many categories, but it was a finalist in bisexual representation, which is the category that my book was a finalist in. So, you know, we've got to support our category mates. Let's open one more package, because I have one more book here. I believe this is my copy of Immortal Longings. because so I think I have a lot of pre-orders coming out. September is a big month for Waterstones pre-orders for me. So I might do a full, another big unboxing there for all of those. Let's crack this open. This should be a more belonging. I was debating pre-ordering this book for a long time because it looks cool, it's kind of interesting. And then the Waterstones edition came out, which has this lovely like blue, reddy, orange colour scheme, which I love slightly more than the original one, and that sold it for me. Like here, look at her. Since pre-ordering this book and it arriving, it arrived a few days ago, and I've just been sitting on it waiting to open it as a kind of reward for myself. I've heard many mixed things about what people think of this book. And I'm interested to find out. Okay, this is the colour scheme of the original artwork here. It does slightly bother me that they don't match, but I can live with that. Let's unbox you. Ooh. But, oh yeah. <laughs> it has the whole red and green colour scheme everywhere. But we have some lovely orange sprayed edges. And let's see, I believe you're signed. Oh, signed in blue, which does match the colour. Very fun. Thank you, Chloe Bong, for always having thematic signatures. Also, I love Waterstones edition so much. Every single book I have coming up that's pre-ordered is a Waterstones edition. Hopefully one day in life I can have my own Waterstones edition. But until then, I can just make special editions for my own book, which I will be talking about soon. So here are all those books today. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any indie recs, let me know, because I need to fully dive into my community. I've got a starting point, but I need to know what books people love. I need recommendations. Let me know if you have any that you love. If not, I will see you next time. Goodbye.